Are you looking for a raid farm that is insanely easy to build? Are you looking for a raid farm that is insanely easy to use and very safe too? And finally, are you looking for a raid farm that is like actually decently efficient? How you doing everybody? It's me Waddles and I got great news for you. If you answered yes to any of those questions, this is the raid farm for you. Today I'm going to show you how to build my newly designed raid farm that'll get you tons of gray loot. In honor of fancy new farm, do me a quick favor and tap like and let's go. The super duper easy to build a raid farm. When it comes to materials for this farm, this is what we're looking at. In the top of the chest, we have exact amounts. Sad news for you right here. These fence gates need to be a non-burnable one, so warped or crimson. The building blocks that we're going to use today, including the staircases, can be any non-burnable building block. Uh, but you're going to need a lot. Like, I'm talking 64 stacks a lot. Maybe, uh, maybe. If you build this farm the easy way, you're going to need, like, almost no building blocks. To power this farm, you're gonna need to borrow a villager from a nearby village. You'll need one bucket of lava and a couple water buckets too. Some other good things to have on hand when using this farm and building it, a really good sword, ideally with looting three, that'll get you more loot. Maybe sponges if you're gonna build this in an ocean to clear out water. Boats are a great way to move villagers around and torches are a wonderful way to light this farm up at nighttime so other mobs don't mess it up. Also, if you can find a pillager apple so you could continually get the bad omen effect, that'd be fire. Location, location. Let's talk about where you could build this farm because today we've got two options. If you want to set this thing up the easy way, all you need is an open field. On the other hand, if you don't mind putting a little bit more work in up front for this farm, build it inside of an ocean that is isolated. Now, if you're going to set this up inside of an ocean, you're going to have better rates, but you're going to need to find a big ocean with no islands nearby. You'll be building essentially an artificial island that is 64 by 64. And to actually set up this farm, you're going to have to clear out a little bit of water too. So it'll be a little bit more advanced. In my opinion, the improved rates are definitely worth it. So today we're going to focus on setting this up inside of an ocean. But just know that if you want to do the easy way, find a plains biome that kind of looks like this. Flatten and smooth out the biome as much as possible. So there's no like big ledges where pillagers can get stuck with pathfinding. And then follow the rest of the tutorial just how it is. It's exactly the same. Once you've located either a super flat area of land, maybe a desert or a plains or something, or even better, a giant open ocean, it's time to start building. When building this inside of an ocean, you're going to want to try and find the, like, the relative middle part of the ocean. For us today, inside of 1.20, the spot that I'm standing right now is going to be perfect. There's no land nearby. Pick a spot in the ocean, go down to the bottom of the ocean, and build up to the surface. If you wanted to, you could maybe use, like, kelp to build up to the surface. It might be a little bit more efficient. Now, uh, this little block right here is going to be the middle block to our farm today. Now, I'm sorry about this, but from the center block, in every single direction, we're going to need to build out 32 blocks. Yeah. Lots of counting and building later, and now I've got the beginning to our big spawning platform. Next up, we're going to fill the platform in. But before you do that, place a block on the exact middle. We don't want to lose it. Next up, using even more building blocks, now I need to fill it all in. All the way. And now a little bit of bad news. <laughs> Obviously, this is going to take a lot of building blocks. Technically speaking, because this platform is so big, you could actually build this out of burnable blocks. Say, something like wood. We're also building this platform even with the top of the water. So, you're going to have water touching it. A couple great blocks that are easy to get in large amounts really quickly. Well, of course, you're going to have dirt. But also, you could do something like maybe wood, spruce wood or something. Or nether rock. You could go over to the nether and get a ton of the stuff really, really quickly. Now, for today's tutorial, I will spare you all the juicy details when it comes to raid mechanics and wave spawning specifically. But long story short, for a raid wave to spawn and not just fail and end the whole raid, well, the guarantee that it'll be able to spawn, we're going to need to have like a lot of extra flat open space. It's a lot of blocks, but good news. This is going to be the most time-consuming step of this entire build today. After you get this step done, it'll be a breeze. Fast forward through a whole lot of block placing, and eventually, we end up with something that looks like this. It's a gigantic flat platform in the middle of the ocean that is, again, even with the water, just in case anything bad happens. With the platform built, now it's time to move over to the center block that we marked earlier on. With some nether fence gates, place four around the center block, and then go ahead and open those gates up. We're eventually going to put lava right in there, but right now, don't worry about it. Break that center block, break down one, and put another fence gate, and open that gate. With the lava cage set up, it's time to start building the pillager funnel. This gate is going to be one. Then we're going to go two, three, four, five. On the sixth block, we're going to place a block. Then we're going to go ahead and mark the same block on every side. 
After we've marked every block, we end up with something like this. All we need to do is connect these blocks right here and make a perfect square sitting above the ground on the surface here. Then, a little bit of unfortunate news, but after you build this square here, it's time to dig down a little bit. We're gonna actually dig out these center blocks that we placed here earlier on in the middle. By placing these blocks on the ground earlier on in the build, we were removing the water from the middle. After you've gone ahead and removed all of those blocks, it's time to add a new floor in here. Move down a little bit, like just one block, and place a block. The new floor of this chamber needs to be sitting two blocks below this ledge right there. Now, I will let you know that in a second we're going to make another hole in the middle. I do personally highly recommend just fill it in all the way, it'll help you get rid of the water. But technically speaking, there will be a diamond that we're going to cut out in the middle. So, I guess you could skip the very center if you want, but I think it's smarter to fill it in. With our new bottom fully filled in, we now have something that looks like this right here. We're going to go ahead and find the center of this thing, which is going to be right below this gate, and break that out. Then we're going to go ahead and go one, two. In every direction, we're going to do the exact same thing. This center diamond right here is going to be a big part of our funnel. We'll go ahead and cut the corners out, and we end it with something that looks like that. Next up, to finish off the rest of our funnel, we need to build the bottom part. From the flat spot right there, we're going to go ahead and do one block, two block, and then a third block. The new floor is going to be all the way down there. Starting on this corner block of the uh, di diamond, if you will, we'll build all the way down to the floor, and then we'll go ahead and place blocks along the wall, creating a perfect square in here. The square is going to end up being five by five and three blocks deep. Now, after you went ahead and boxed all of that in, you're going to have water in the middle. If you have sponges, great. Drop a sponge in the middle or just somewhere in here and pull out all of the water somehow. If you don't have access to sponges, just fill it in and then dig it out. When it comes to our Raider funnel here, the very final step we need to do here is pick a corner. Any corner, doesn't matter. We'll go with this one. And then we're going to dig down 20 blocks. This block right there that I broke out, that's going to be one, two, and so on. At the very bottom of this 20 block funnel, dig one more block, jump up, and place a hopper going into one of the side blocks. Then dig a couple more blocks out and place a chest. Now go ahead and start digging a small hallway. If you want to set up a ladder from this chest right here, go 10 blocks. Then you could go ahead and dig straight up and add a ladder in. If you wanted to dig something like a staircase, no ladders needed at all, go ahead and go like eight or so blocks and then start making a staircase. Even better, if you're fancy here, you could make some kind of slime block dropper to get into this farm and then a bubble column to rocket you out of it. How you get in and out of this farm does not matter at all as long as the entrance of the farm isn't like inside of the funnel or anything like that. One thing that I do recommend, no matter what, if you do a ladder, staircase, whatever, make sure you cover this thing up with like trap doors, blocks, or something. You don't want pillagers to jump into your farm while you're trying to use it. Now back down here, where the hopper is, we're going to place a couple temporary blocks back in here. We're going to put a block right there and put water right there. Then we'll go ahead and fill this in like that, so when we drop the villager down here, it can't get out. Next up, you're going to want to dig out a small room down here. When it comes to the specific dimensions of this room, great news, you do whatever you want. If you want the room to be like a small 5x5 room, that's cool. If you want to make it a little bit bigger, 20x20, 20 20, go ahead and go crazy. Do whatever you want to do. No matter what you do, though, make sure the floor of this room is the block that the chest is sitting on. So in other words, the pillagers are going to fall right where that water is. Now, either directly to the left or to the right of that dropping area, it doesn't really matter. You're going to need to make a small holding cell for a villager. Inside of this holding cell, we're going to need to place a bed somewhere, a workstation, and a bell. I recommend setting the configuration up something like this. If you have fences, maybe throw some fences in here, but technically not necessary. You could just do solid blocks and basically trap the villager in there with a bed, a workstation, and a bell. Finally, here to wrap up our construction project for now, go ahead and place some light sources down here. Double check, make sure you got the water on the hopper and go back up to the surface. Back up on the surface, it's time for trap doors and water. We'll start low and work higher up. So we got our dropping funnel right here. We're gonna wanna place a water source in this bottom square, exactly opposite corner, that dropping funnel. By placing a water source right there, it's gonna flow all the way to the edge and then stop. To prevent the future raiders from getting stuck on that block right there, swap it out for a staircase facing forward on both one. Higher up, up here, we're gonna need to do the exact same thing. We're gonna wanna place staircases on the edge of this whole diamond thing that we built here facing forward towards the center. Long story short, because of how mob pathfinding works, leaving solid blocks here could cause them to get stuck every once in a while. Two staircases down low, a bunch more up here. Now it's time for the water sources. Place a water source in every single corner and let the water flow. Your water currents should flow all the way to the center, but not drop down. And finally, it's time for trap doors. On the inside of a ring that we created, on every side, place nine trap doors. That's going to mean you can end up skipping the corners. Open the trap doors and you end up with a funnel that looks like this.
Next up is villager time. Go out into your world and find one. Now the specific villager you're gonna use for this farm does not matter at all, so long as it's not a nit. You're gonna wanna have a villager that can actually take a job. You find a villager in your world and then somehow move it back over to your farm. In my humble opinion, the best and easiest way to do this is with boats, but you do you. Once you've made it back over to your farm, using maybe an extra workstation or two, or even just more boats, we need to transport the villager down to the bottom. Moving our villager friend down to the bottom could be done in a couple different ways. Like I said, patience. Like I said, maybe boats. Or maybe, like I said, a couple workstations. We could go ahead and place workstations moving over towards the center of the farm to get the villager right over there. Once it jumped up with the water properly placed everywhere, push them in. Now, if we go ahead and speed up and catch up here, we can see that the villager has now safely dropped all the way down to the bottom of this farm. In the safety of our own farm, we can go ahead and break that block and let the water flow the villager out of that trap right there. Then place the block down and get rid of that water. With a workstation placed down here, the villager should pathfind right over to it. After that, it's just a little bit of pushing the villager around until you can get it inside of the cell. And keep it there. Forever. Back over at the bundle to get it ready properly for the farm, we're going to go ahead and place some building blocks so we have one block of open space, just like that. And just like that, we're just about done with this farm. The very final thing that you're going to need to do is move over to the center of this farm and get lava in the middle, in the fence gates. To do this in survival, I recommend placing a couple temporary blocks, move over here, and while crouching, place a lava bucket on that bottom gate, just like that. Then go ahead and remove those blocks, open the trap door, and voila, your raid farm is done. Now to actually be able to use this farm, if you're familiar with raids, then you know all this part. But if you're not, you need to go into your world and find an illager captain. Or in other words, the pillager with the banner on its head. Then you need to take it out. When you take the special pillager out, you're going to be granted with the bad omen effect. Now that we have the bad omen effect, to kick the raid off, all we need to do is move back over to the farm. But before you do that, difficulty. The difficulty that you are currently playing on will change the amount of waves that your raid has. Like I said, not going into all the mechanics today, but long story short, hard difficulty is the best for a raid. With hard difficulty and more than one level of the bad omen effect, if you move back over to your raid farm, you will increase the amount of good loot that you get. As soon as you walk near this raid farm, the raid will begin. Quickly get to the bottom of this thing. Now down here at the bottom of this farm, if we walk over to this bell and ring it, we'll actually get the glowing effect on all of the raiders. We can see that the raiders have already moved to the middle. The raiders are going to drop down into this farm. All you need to do is stand here and take these things out. All the loot will be thrown inside of the chest. Because we dropped these mobs like 20 blocks, it should be a one-hit takeout. Like, just about every time. To maximize your loot potential here, get looting three on your sword. And to take them out easier, maybe sweeping edge. At the top of the screen, you have a raider's remaining bar. As soon as you take out all the raiders inside of one wave of the raid, the next one begins. When using this farm, I recommend staying in the bottom the entire time. It'll be 100% safe. But back up on the surface, if we moved up here to see what happens, the raiders spawn on the platform and immediately move towards the center. They try and walk out of trap doors and fall in. Now this lava blade up here, this is going to take the Ravager out and the saddle will fall down. You'll get the saddles. In the later waves of the raid, you'll start seeing evokers. I recommend uh, just standing down here and taking these mobs out as they fall in. Don't let the evokers fall and linger. You don't want Vexus to fly through the block and take the villager out. And so that's it, your Minecraft 1.20 and up raid farm is super simple to build, really really safe to use, and great loot too. To make using this farm long term even easier, the final tip that I have for you is locate the closest pillager outpost in your world. After you've done that, set up some kind of path, road, maybe nether tunnel over to this pillager outpost. One of the easiest and most consistent ways to find pillager captains to get the bad omen effect is at the outpost. They'll continually spawn over here every once in a while. If you have any questions with my design, throw them down in the comments or maybe on the subreddit, r slash waddles. Thank you all so much for watching. You're the best. Like and subscribe. Next up, if you haven't yet, I highly recommend checking out my iron farm next. Always a beauty. You need it. Goodbye, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow.